Hi guys, it's Kelly here. Today we are going to be working with this cute little stamp. This is uh, called the Forest Silhouette. It's from the Into the Wilderness, um, what is the word I want? Collection? Yep, words are hard. The Into the Wilderness collection that's from uh, Spellbinders. And so I, as a colorist, sometimes struggle to use solid images. And so I wanted to show you a couple of different ways that I use them to kind of stretch them so they aren't a little one note. Um, so each card, it's kind of like beginner, intermediate, and then maybe more experienced card maker. But I would encourage you to try whatever style of card that you enjoy because you're only going to get better the more you practice it. So... Two of the cards involve a uh, Distress Ink background. You can use whatever inks you have. I like the way Distress Inks blend, and so that's why I use those. Um, plus, I bought them all. I have them all, bought all the things. Um, so here I'm kind of doing like a little sunset look. Um, I thought that that would be pretty. You can always do like with stamps like this that are kind of like a silhouette scene, um, sunset, sunrise, you know, blue sunny day, nighttime scene. There, there's a bunch of different skies that you can create, um, you know, to get whatever feel of the card it is that you're after. When I'm doing my distress inking, I like to do it twice. I feel like it gives me um, a better blend and a much more saturated look. So I go out to my darkest and then back into my lightest. One thing to note with ink blending, whatever color you use uh, last is going to be the color that's most prevalent. So here I'm putting the orange back over on top of the pink. And so that orange like corally color is much more, um, much more obvious. I wanted it to be more pink. So after I do the yellow, I'm going to go back over that area with my pink so that that's the one that's sitting on top and that is the one that you see the majority of. So just something to keep in mind if you're maybe not liking the way your color blending is going. For the second card, which will be the more intermediate one, I am going to do a nighttime scene. Um, I'm using just blues for this but I would really encourage you to play with colors because when you think about a nighttime scene, you know, you could add in some teals and greens to your blue. You could add in some pinks and purples to your blue. Um, it really just kind of depends, again, on the look you're going for. Um, but I would encourage you to kind of play around with those different backgrounds and see what you can get. Um, I'm a blue purist. <laughs> um, not all the time, but I do love blue. You know that if you watch my channel. And so I decided that I was just going to stick with the blues for this particular card. Um, that's not abnormal for me as far as like nighttime scenes go. I did um, choose to leave it pretty light at the bottom. I wanted it to have some color variation. Um, because I knew that the rest of the card was going to be really dark. And so I took this all the way out to black. And then I'm going to do the same thing I did before, bring it back down to my lightest color. Um, yeah, as a colorist, solid stamps, like I, you know, I've worked for several different companies over the years. And like when they have a release that's like really solid stamp heavy, um, I'm like, oh no, 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 I'm in trouble. Um. But because I work for, I have worked for various um, different companies and kind of have been forced out of my comfort zone, it makes me um, come up with different ways to use the things that I have. And that is never a bad thing. Even though I might be struggling through it at the time that it happens, um, the next time that I have a solid stamp... Um, then I'm more comfortable with using it. And the time after that, I'm even more comfortable. And so here are some things that have just kind of um, worked for me. So I want to make the backgrounds a little bit more interesting. You don't have to do this. Um, you, In fact, you can leave out any step that you are not interested in. Uh, but this is just clean water. And I'm just doing 
um, you know, some sprinkling. I am going to use my Perfect Pearls in the color Perfect Pearl. Um, always confusing when I say that, even to myself, and I know what the product is called, um, on both of these backgrounds. So on the one on the left, I want it to give the look of, um, well, you know how like when the light streams through the trees and there's still moisture in the air, you can see like the little shiny bits. Um, that's what I'm going for with the sunset card. For the card that it's a nighttime scene, I'm looking for kind of sparkly, shiny stars. We're going to do another step on this nighttime card. Um, but for now, that the background that we did for the, for the beginner card, for the sunset card, that is complete. Now, the next step for me for this um, nighttime scene is using a little bit of white acrylic paint. And this is just going to give me another variation of those stars that I want to create. Um, I did, if you saw in the beginning, I kind of tapped it off to the left hand side um, just because I didn't want them to be huge. I wanted them to be fine. So now that these are dry um, for this card with the, the sunset scene, I am going to stamp my um, scene, my my stamp um in brown you could definitely use black i was looking for something to be a little bit softer and something that would go with the colors that you know a neutral that would go with the colors in the background um you could also use a gray a gray would be beautiful here um but i the colors are a bit on the warmer side and so i thought a brown would be pretty um i'm using hero arts cup of joe but again, anything that you have on hand will work well for this. Um, I don't use a lot of brown in my card making. Um, I'm more of a bold black um, against the bright colors. But sometimes making something a little bit softer can uh, serve its own purpose. You know what I'm saying? Um, and you'll notice that when we complete these cards, I didn't put any sentiments on any of them. The reason that I chose not to put any sentiments on any of them was so that I could... They're like good neutral based cards. And so I will be able to put a sentiment on them when I'm ready to use them and use it for just about anything. Um, that's why images like this are so great because they're super versatile for what you're looking for. So I did up, end up having to stamp this twice um, just because it's a larger stamp. This was before I had my pressure tool. <laughs> this is before I run, run, well, I had it, but I did not remember that I had it before I remembered I had my pressure tool so this one is done and you can still see all that beautiful shimmer at the top and then before I clean off this stamp I am going to second generation stamp this background this is going to be the base of our third card um so if you decide you want to go with the third card and the no line coloring look you need to second generation stamp the stamp so you have an outline to follow so now I've cleaned the stamp and I'm going to line this back up on my night sky and this time I'm going to stamp it in black. Um, and again, I think I had to stamp it twice um, just because it's a larger stamp and it's hard to get good coverage sometimes. It has nothing to do with the ink. It really has to do with my laziness and um, not taking the time to really, really ink up my stamp before I stamp it because I get tired of inking. You know, it happens to the best of us. So as far as life goes, we are, I've been back to work now for about three weeks. Um, and, you know, we're still adjusting. With the addition of our sweet little girl, there was an adjustment, obviously, when she was born. There was an adjustment when Eric went back to work. There was an adjustment when I went back to work. Um, and so everything is just kind of fluid and changing. We're still getting um, tons of help from both of our mothers, which is wonderful. They are fantastic. Because we are in a unique situation where I work 12-hour shifts. And 12 hours is a lot for anybody to watch an infant. Um, it just is, you know, especially since our parents are a little bit older plus you add in there that I have to sleep at some point because when I work I work two 12s back to back 
Um, sometimes I work two 12s and an eight. Um, so it just depends on where we're at. Now, then Eric also has a crazy schedule um, because he's, in addition to working his regular shift, he is also training to make that move into the detective bureau. So it's all just kind of wild. All right, so back to the card. Here we go. These are our, our two finished cards, except for this is how we're going to take this one up a notch. Okay, I have a white colored pencil. And what I'm going to do is on all of the parts that are facing the center, I'm going to take this white colored pencil and I'm going to give the branches a highlight. I'm not actually drawing on the stamped image. I'm putting the line right next to it um, because it was much easier to get pigment down that way. But by doing this, and it, I know it seems like it's probably a little bit time consuming. It actually really didn't take that long. Um, but by doing this, by giving this highlight, it's going to give your piece so much more movement and so much more dimension because it's going to appear as this glow that's coming from the center of the forest is reflecting and highlighting these tree branches or plants or grasses or whatever. It's really no different than the backlighting technique we would use if we had colored this ourselves, but the stamp kind of lets us cheat that part by stamping it down all dark and then adding these highlights with this white colored pencil. It's really gonna make everything pop. It is one extra step from what you would normally, you know, just stamp it and then go. But I, I really think that the results are quite worth it because I think that it really separates the image and gives it a lot of dimension, um, even though it's just the same flat image that we stamped with the first card which don't get me wrong, is still super pretty, but it's a totally different look. Um, so that's how we're kind of going to bring this one up um, a notch. And it's a way that you can do that, you know, for any um, night scenes. You could even do this for the sunset scene where, you know, you were adding a little bit of reflective light. And then we're going to move on. Like here you can see the dimension difference. Um, and then we're going to move on to the third card. The third card is definitely much more involved. Um, but again, it's kind of getting more bang for your buck, helping you practice new things um, and getting a really different look. So I did do some ink blending over top of my second generation stamping. Um, I wasn't trying to be smooth about it. I wasn't trying to um, get some great color blend. I just wanted a little bit of blue in the background. And if it was patchy, I was fine with that. It looked like clouds. And so here I'm adding a little bit of yellow to the bottom. I know that I'm going to add green grass in there, but I needed something to kind of, you know, blend out into the distance. I've picked um, some browns. This was before my E55 came in, by the way. So I was still in the E20 families. I am going to go in and I'm just going to take the tip of my marker and kind of redraw in these branches. And then for the actual trunks of the trees, I'm going to add shading when it's on the left to the left hand side, when it's on the right to the right hand side. I'm doing the highlight as if it is in the center, just like I did with the nighttime scene. And then I'm just going to go through and add my various, you know, shadings like I would normally do if I was coloring um, something with a black outline image. This time it's just a solid stamp, but by the time, you know, all is said and done here with the coloring, you won't even be able to tell that it was a solid stamp. Um, it'll look much more organic, which is really pretty, even though no line coloring does take me a little bit of time. Um, and it, it, until you get comfortable with it, it may take you a little bit of time as well, but it's a beautiful look. And if it's something that you really enjoy, I would encourage you to practice it. So back to uh, um, our crazy schedule. So I've told you um, recently that Peanut had joined a basketball league and um, he is now enjoying that much more. Our first game was crazy. It was wild. Nobody knew what to do. They literally had no idea 
um offense defense they didn't they didn't know it was just kids running up and down the court standing around um at least on our team on the other teams not so much um but so his practices are supposed to be on Monday evenings now when we signed up for the league they said it could be Mondays or Tuesdays they picked Mondays that's fine it actually worked out much better for me because my short day is on Mondays meaning my eight hour shift so I could go to every practice um and then his games are on Saturday mornings uh that is a little bit more uh unfortunate for me because either I have to go into work Saturday night um so it's like I sleep during Saturday during the day because I have to go on Saturday night or I'm getting off of work um Saturday morning and then coming home and going to sleep and having to get up early to get his games because they're always um in the morning time so those are a little like ye it's rough for me but nonetheless you do what you got to do right So last Saturday, well, let's go back. Let's go back to the beginning. Let's go back way back to the beginning. That was only like actually three weeks ago. (laughs) Um, So originally, like I said, it was Monday nights. That practice, the first practice, our coach was like, hey, just FYI, I was able to get some open time on the court on Saturday morning if you guys want to come and practice. And he didn't have a game that morning because it was the first week. And so he was actually with his dad. So I was like, it's up to you whether or not you want to bring him. If he was with me, I wouldn't be bringing him. Like, I'm just letting you know that doesn't work for me. So then the next week we had the Martin Luther King snowstorm. And so they canceled practice on Mondays. And then she moved it. They canceled it on Mondays and then we got an email that she was able to get the court on Saturday and they were going to move the games all back so that the kids wouldn't, um, you know, they would, would, they would be playing a game with only one practice. And so she moved the practice to Saturday at 10 and I was like, what is happening here? Like, this is crazy. So then she sends out another email that they're going to move they're going to do the practice what did she say on monday they were also going to have a no they were going to move the practice from monday to saturday and then the practice on monday would be optional so i send her an email and i don't want to be that parent you know what i mean i do not but obviously peanut is not my only kid i cannot be the only parent in the situation where we have crazy schedules and we have to carve out particular times to be able to do the things so i sent her an email and i was like hey just want to kind of touch base with you um about the scheduling of things uh because we have crazy schedules and it is you know, he's not our only child. And so we have to really make an effort to carve out this time and you kind of keep changing it. So what is it going to be? Are you going to do practices on Mondays? Are you going to do practices on Saturdays? Um, and because I just need to know so that we can make arrangements, like you can't keep changing it every week. And so she sends me back an email and she was like, you know, this should be the only week that we, Uh, the only other week that we move it to Saturday because remember we've already moved it once Um, that we move it to Saturday and that was just because of the snowstorm Um, you know if he ever needs a ride to practice or whatever I'm happy to help out which was very nice of her but again she's missing the point like I want to go I want to go with him I want to be able to see him practice and see you know where he's at and how he's doing and and you know experience this this with him um but I was like, okay, so that's the only one. That's fine, whatever. Well, then, oh, and then she said in there, like, I thought he would be, I thought the kids would be available on Saturday mornings because normally we would have a game then. Except that's not the time our game was scheduled for. Our game was not scheduled for 10 a.m. So that didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. But moving on. So um, we go, we play the first game. Nobody knows what's happening. And then we have that practice. Now we're back on Mondays. 
Well, this time with the practice, previously they were doing nothing, okay? Nothing that involved defense, offense, and I think it became pretty apparent to the coaches as well as everybody else that the kids didn't know what was happening. Um, And so they needed to spend some more time developing their fundamentals. So um, this practice, instead of just practicing dribbling and shooting, which is what they had done previously, you know, they were going to scrimmage against another team. Did you know that there is drama in kids' sports? Did you know this? You would think that I would know this because I watch a lot of crime documentaries. You know, I've seen the cheerleader one. I've seen the the different, you know, ones where parents get crazy over sports. My kids ate. I was un- I, I was unexpecting the drama that unfolds in sports. Elementary school sports. What? What is happening? This is not life or death. This is not even a big deal. Um, But I realized I have a little bit of a different background. So um, basically, she says to everybody, this is our coach, you know, we're looking at possibly moving the practices from Monday to Tuesday uh, because we would be able to have the whole court. Okay. But tonight, when we had practiced, that night that she said that, we had scrimmaged with another team, which obviously is only going to help make the kids understand the game better, be more comfortable with the game. And I'm not athletically inclined. I was traumatized as a youth um, with organized sports, and I never really played them again. So I'm like, okay, well, that's not going to help them get any more comfortable. Like, what's the game plan here? So she says that we're going to take a vote. So she sends, she she doesn't send anything out. She says it to all of us. And then this past practice that we went to, she tells us we're going to go ahead and move it to Tuesday. And I was like, well, where was the voting? You know, because obviously Mondays works better for me. And she was like, well, everybody that I talked to said that Tuesdays was fine. Okay, well, I mean, I guess we're the minority. So that's like, we'll move the practice. But I'm a little miffed about it. And I was even more miffed about it when I found out that apparently the real issue is that team that we scrimmaged with, she doesn't get along with their coach. He is teaching the kids to steal the ball, uh, which is not allowed in our league, and that is his fault. Um, But her response is to then move our practice so that we are not practicing at the same time as their team. Um when she could just make the choice not to scrimmage with them. So I'm a little bit confused. Apparently they couldn't work out whatever their issues were. Um, and now everybody has to move their practice and completely uproot their, you know, schedule. I don't understand. Um, you would think you would, as adults, be able to resolve any issues or just stay away from each other. But apparently not. Uh, so now, now our practice day has changed. I am very frustrated <laughs> very frustrated, though I would never tell Nathan that, um, with the whole thing. Because it's like, you didn't take the time to teach him nothing, and then now that they could possibly be learning something, we're moving the practices. Whatever. All right, so back to the cards. These are the three cards, um, the backgrounds, and then all I did was mount them. The dogs are barking at nothing again. Nothing. Um, I just mounted them on uh, either, this was the only one I think I did black, the other two I did white, with just um, kind of like a strip of color mat uh, that matched each individual card. So for this one, I picked like a royal blue. And then I chose the black because it makes the most sense with the image. Um, It just does. You know, it's black all the way around. And I did trim them down. Um, I should state that. I did trim them down to make them a little bit smaller. Um, for this one, because it was on white cardstock, I did take a black pen and then just go around the edges. I would encourage you to use water-based. I used alcohol-based because I couldn't find my water base, and I wasn't worried about it bleeding into the image because it was all black. So I'm going to, I, I did all the cards the same way, by the way, if I didn't say that. Um, I am going to pop them all up on foam, um, the actual stamped image portion of it and then I'm as I stated earlier I'm not even going to put a sentiment on it I'm just going to kind of keep these in limbo until I um, have a use for them so that I can just slap a sentiment on there 
for whatever the appropriate occasion is and then uh, move on with my life. So I did blue for this one. I chose pink for the no line coloring one and purple for the sunset one. So I'd be very interested to know um, which one of these cards was your favorite um, and which one you think that you will be trying in the future. Um, I think everybody's tastes are kind of different and so I know it's gonna be different for everybody, but I would like to know what you think. That was my child coming in the door and slamming, slamming the front door. Why is that necessary? I don't know. I have no answers for you. I'm just a mother over here making it up as I go. What's happening? Who knows? Not me. I'll find out. Maybe I'll tell you next video. So here I am putting the glitters on each of the flowers. Um, and I did the same thing for the other uh, sunset card. For the um, night sky one, I didn't put any glitters on there because I didn't see the need to. So... Yeah, that's it. Those are all the cards. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Oh, I almost forgot about the sale. Spellbinders has this huge clearance sale. I'll link it below. Go check that out. There's like stamps for like $2. Okay. All right. I'll catch you on the next video. Bye.